Kia ora everybody, you're tuning into Dr. Burst from Tamaki Makoto in Aotearoa. So for those tuning in for the first time, this video is part of a public activation called the Avondale Pavilion Project. Each month, we get together with a different writer and or artist, um, and we get them to repaint the pavilion structure in the heart of Avondale at Avondale Art Park. We're surrounded by the local legal wall, and the idea is really to update the pavilion every couple of weeks, capture the artist painting in real time, and, and amongst that, we kind of pair that video with a conversation with the person for the month. In this month's video, we sit down with my good friend Tex from OT Dub, who resides from Hamilton but has been kind enough to join us in Tamaki Makoto. So let's crack straight into it. So could you tell the audience who you are and where you come from? Tēnā tātou, um, ko poi tōku ingoa, he uri au no Ngāpuhi me tainui. Um, kia ora, I'm Poi, aka Tex. Um, I hail from the far north and Waikato Tainui. And which secondary school did you go to? Uh, so I grew up in Hamilton. Um, the school that I went to, the high school I went to was Hillcrest High. Um, I went from third form all, all the way through my senior years and graduated there. And yeah, it was a pretty cool school. It wasn't um, too bad or too good. It was just perfect. It was pretty good with the mathematics. Uh, there was a lot of <laughs> students there with uh, with the brains for maths. And um, yeah, they had a pretty cool design department there as well. And when you were studying at secondary school, were you already creatively inclined and know that, you know, art was what you wanted to do? Yeah, well, I was really big into my art. Um, uh, they also had a paper with that integrated design as well, so art and design. And um, I found that the two were complementing each other, you know. They balanced each other out, the design the structure of the design and yeah fine art where it was just a free free stallion that can couldn't be tamed and then yeah design which was more work to limits and if you know what I mean yeah were you interested in any other subjects in secondary school yeah I'll, you know being a big moldy boy I was into my sports as well so uh, yeah it was, it was always rugby or rugby league um, on Wakama that took over and, and the off times it would yeah, just be straight art and illustration um, yeah, and graffiti. My initial introduction to you was obviously through graffiti but how did you actually end up starting to paint graffiti in the first place? I think I was about 12 or 13. Oh, so young. Yeah, and um, I was into my illustrations and um, my brother-in-law, Chex, Chex One, um, he he saw my illustrations and he mentioned to the boys, some other graph writers in Hamilton at the time, oh, we should get this guy onto the cans because um, he's pretty good. <laughs> he's pretty good with his illustrations. He's, we'll see if he'd be any good on the cans. And yeah, sure enough, they took me down to the train tracks and let me loose on a couple of Dulux and super cheap autos. <laughs> mate, mate. Yeah. So would you say that you and Chex were kind of like a bit of a duo? Yeah, so um, it was him and Swarm uh, that were the, the two main writers that I was associated with um, Hamilton at the time. Yeah, so from the age of 13 or 12, just developed the skills of um, can control and they were just honing my skills pretty much and uh, telling me where I could perfect my skills and areas and yeah. So you've mentioned that you started painting graffiti but you were also interested in illustration so what did you start painting first? Basically I was the character. <laughs> I was the character um, painter out of the crew so if it came to characters, I'd, I'd jump onto the character in between the pieces because um, basically um, the areas that we went to for painting was, wasn't that really big for um, five graph riders, so I'd be the one to 
jump in the middle and link them all up. But uh, in saying that, yeah, it was pretty cool. And what period of time was this? Because was this the early 2000s? Uh, yeah, I believe it was like 2004 or five. That was um, the time it was happening. Reflecting back on the 2000s, how would you describe the Hamilton graffiti scene? I think we had a really good um, family unit down Hamilton, you know. Um, there was hardly, well, I think, if any, there was hardly any beef going on down there. Um, it was just everyone just linking up for a paint and, yeah, just get crews from Wellington up or Auckland down and we'll just link up for a paint and have a barbecue over it and, yeah. And who would you say were some notable writers that stood out to you? Yeah, well, um, yeah, the big names like uh, Spell, he was getting up with uh, Four Corners and same with Swarm, he was uh, their writer. You had Dal doing a lot of uh, youth work, um, getting our rangatahi involved and channeling all their creative, um, creative thoughts into murals or graffiti and um, yeah, putting them to good use. Because there's a you know a lot of youth out there that was uh, had idle time and he was uh, channeling their their creative minds. Um, so yeah, like, he was going hard with that. Um, uh, Siren, he was going hard, even though he's related to Rotorua. He was. Was he based in Hamilton? He was a uh, yeah, I believe he was an OG um, Hamilton because he went to church college, I think, I believe. Speaking of hip hop. Were you involved in many of the other elements like breakdancing, DJing and MCing or was it mostly the expression of graffiti that you kind of gravitated towards? Uh, yeah, well, there was a time I was trying to be a little b-boy as well, but, you know, um, being a heavy prop in uh, front row, <laughs> not really uh, light on my hands or feet, so yeah, just ended up becoming just straight rider. So, as the go-to character guy, you're obviously developing your aesthetic, but you also, I'm guessing, dabbled with letters. I mean, what was the motivation for starting to kind of paint your name as well? Yeah, um, definitely was uh, motivated to uh, get into my letter forms and try on different styles and, um, you know, getting, drawing characters is um, one thing, but yeah. It's, it's nothing. It means nothing when you you can you can't even do a uh, proper letter form or chrome or um, yeah an outline. Uh, but in saying that, like that's where you learn most of the uh, skills as well with um, lines and um, cutbacks and just learning all that stuff. Um, you probably won't do that in painting a character. So yeah, there's definitely things elements and doing little forms that you won't get painting just characters. Acknowledging our roots obviously and influences are really important to me. Uh, so who would you say are five writers or illustrators that you think have inspired you in your career? Yeah, there was um, Exist, Pete. Uh, he was definitely um, had the lock on his wild style. I love it. I love the way his letters flowed together. Um, and it definitely had a strong influence on um, on me when I was uh, creating my letter forms. Because text, that's a pretty hard combination to get, you know, with the E and the C and the H and yeah, so definitely um, he had a strong influence with his, his style and uh, definitely fat one, Charles, his, his, um, his style, his um, technical application was just flawless. Um, just, yeah, every piece that he was coming out with and, you know, back then it was uh, looking it up on the computers at school and it was super slow internet and um, just loading up these pictures of all their new pieces and I'm just freaking out like, wow, I've just done a new banger piece. How do you do that? Yeah, definitely his te technical application and the ability to use left and right hand to outline. And, and be dexterous. <laughs> yeah, freak. Uh, another one, yourself bro, Bobby? Far up. Bro, 
there was that time there where you were just rolling around numbering all your pieces. I remember you came through, you rolled through Hamilton, and done a few there, I think 13 and 14. Um, and yeah, you're just a machine. You're just persistent. You're just going hard using liters and liters of paint. And that was definitely something that I tried to tried to incorporate was just going hard and painting and just unleashing onto all the walls. Um, yeah, definitely a hit motivation. Uh, little Elf, uh, he's, his illustrations um, is second to none. His, I don't even know how you think of some of that stuff. Like, it's the stuff you see in your weirdest nightmares and it's just like, there in um, clean detail <laughs> and he was definitely um, one of my idols for illustration um, just to do it straight off the bat as well like no sketching of plans or anything no references just no straight prediction in. no prediction and uh, i believe that's just pure talent man yeah i admire him for that um one more one more, oh, yeah, you can't can't go past the SQ. Like that guy is just beast. It's probably been said with all the the other talks, but um, yeah, just like to have a fat mehi to ask you. Jeez, you know, you just paved the way for a lot of riders to, you know, show show other riders that it is possible to take graph to all these different levels and yeah the places that that guy's taken graph it's just crazy not just nationwide not just in little new zealand but you know taking the crew to write for gold all those years and taking all those taking all those as well mm. um but not only that just like all those all this other work that he's done in the world and yeah i'd say that's that's just like a motivation to keep driving. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty incredible list of talented people uh, who have made some crazy contributions to the scene. But just, just backtracking a little bit, uh, I know that amongst the development of what you were doing artistically, you also pursued an academic um, pathway and, and studied at Wintech in Hamilton. So what was the motivation to go into tertiary study and what did that journey actually look like for you? So basically, um, I didn't know a lick about computers, didn't know anything to do with computers. Uh, I remember my first day going to Wintech, I uh, spent about an hour in the hub trying to log in. Because <laughs> I didn't know how to turn the Mac computer on and the button was on the back. Oh, that was hilarious. But um, in saying that, uh, that's basically why I invested in um, getting a tertiary study and yeah I felt like um, what's his name um, Ben Stiller of Zoolander just staring at the computer trying to turn it on and uh, it was shocking but um yeah that's why I invested in all those years and money to learn uh, to transform my skills with spray paint and pencil to the digital format and definitely helped a lot um, in regards to uh, scaling uh, using different mediums yeah so when you were studying at Wintech what did you major in one of my majors is uh, graphic design um, and also web design because I didn't a moldy boy that didn't know how to use a computer uh, it was, just hilarious that he's doing um, advanced web design <laughs> towards the later years and it was pretty hilarious that um, I was doing really good in that as well and uh, it's yeah just proof that you can transfer your skills from paper to digital screen. I mean that's quite a surprise since you're a painter um, what was the actual aspirations for studying coding? My, my, my thinking for this was um, I was looking at, before I finished all my degree and everything, um, I was looking at jobs for um, graphic designers and I noticed 90% of the jobs were looking for web designers as well, so me thinking, uh, I think I should learn how to code so I can actually get a job when I finish. <laughs> 
Yeah, but that was basically why I done um, web design um, because I believe I would have got to the end of the degree and um, I would have been a good designer, but most jobs were looking for a web designer or simple coder, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely a logical way to, you know, reverse engineer it and, and see what the employers are wanting, right? And that was the first thing our tutor said in um, web design. It was, uh, why are you doing this class? <laughs> we, we all laughed at first, but he was, uh, he was like serious, genuine as he was just looking at us. He's like, well, what are you doing here? Why, why are you learning this class? And um, I was the only one that put my hand up and said, because a lot of the jobs are requiring web design skills and that's why I'm here. <laughs> and he's like, thank you. At least he knows why he's here and you guys are just sitting here. <laughs> what year did you graduate from your degree? I uh, graduated 2016. Ah, okay. So so it wasn't really too long ago. Um, so from what from that point until now, where has that journey led you after graduating? Yeah, so I'm... Um, basically scored a position at a signage company in uh, North Shore um, that required my skills uh, as a designer so um, yeah cracked it straight off the bat oh sorry no I was a freelance designer straight out of graduation but then a year went by uh, asked a mate if that was working for the signage company at the time if there was any positions going for a designer and he went and asked his boss, the boss rang me saying, oh yeah, come in, have a chat, and saw my credentials, and he was like, yeah, just so you know, this is not a creative um, position, it's just basically reproducing other people's designs and sending it to the printers or the fabricators to make, um, so how do you feel about that, and I was just like, yeah, pretty much I just want to hit the autopilot and yeah, just cruise. That's, that's good for me. I don't want to have the stress of creating things all the time. And yeah, that's basically what I've done after graduation. So alongside the 9 to 5 work that you do, I know that you also have a personal practice doing design work and painting murals. Could you explain a little bit about that part of your journey so far? Yeah, so I always had the side hustle of um, doing feature walls for private, private jobs. Yeah, that was definitely the the cream on top, you know, the cherry on top, you know, was to get all these side mural jobs that I could squeeze in the weekends or days off or take time off to do it. And um, yeah, that was my creative avenue. That was me getting, releasing all my creative energy that was pent up after working at the signage company for four or five years. And what type of murals do you create? Murals? Um, heavily um, influenced by my Māori heritage um, so basically I try to tell the stories of the the place where the wall is located or try to create a story for for that place um, because you know over time um, the stories get forgotten um, and because we're an oral race we're all about telling stories through song, mihi, haka, um, and whakairo carvings, and it's all about doing my part as an artist, and as a Māori artist, um, to tell these stories, and I think it's, it needs to be told, you know, because these places are getting forgotten of their significance, and um, I, I believe it's, it's my duty to get these stories out there into the world, and hand it down to the next generation. Obviously, each site or area or place have different stories and histories. So my question to you from a cultural perspective is do various iwis have issues or concerns about people uh, painting stories or murals uh, in those particular locations if they're not from that iwi and, and you're maybe telling their stories? That's what it, it comes across with a lot of, um, of my murals. Um, I get a lot of people asking me, oh, so if you're not from here, why why do you think you can tell our story? Or, And to be honest, I don't tell 
um, their stories. I create my own story that uh, aligns with something about that uh, iwi or hapu. I just try to avoid the red tape. I just stay away from the the sacred stuff or the tapu stuff because um, that story is there and it, you know everyone knows that story. So um, I try to create another story. I try to get poetic on it and um, uh, create a story that goes alongside it or yeah my interpretation of um, what I think the story should tell. In one of our previous pavilion videos we spoke with Mark from TMD who highlighted that in the current generation he feels that a lot he feels that a lot of rangatahi at the moment are quite disconnected from their cultural roots in whakapapa. Uh, other than painting murals about your, your culture, do you are there many other things that you do to connect with being Māori? Uh, I do a lot. I do um, kapahaka. I stand with my um, my tribe and my iwi and my family and perform on a stage. Um, and I also do traditional navigation and voyaging. Sailing on uh, a canoe across the ocean to see our relatives in the islands navigating by the sun and the moon and yeah propelled by wind i mean that's a perfect segue into what you mentioned to me earlier when you were painting about your navigation story around the world could you tell our audience a bit about that experience i mean from what i gather it sounded pretty life-changing yeah so um there was a time there where tech sort of dropped off the radar for a bit and i think it was about six years of um, little to no painting, little pieces. Um, yeah, I was just sailing the oceans with um, my bros, and uh, so it was a, a waka waka hodua, a sailing canoe, double hull, um, and it would hold a crew of fourteen. But we normally sailed around with ten or twelve, and we would sail across to all the other islands and. Uh, backtrack our our fuck up up our genealogy back to Hawaii, back to the beginning, and um, yeah, it was definitely an eye opener to see our origins of my bloodline, um, the bloodline of my brothers and and sisters. Um, yeah, it definitely put things into perspective on who we are as Maori, and um, yeah, it definitely is a motivation for me anyway to just keep doing what I'm doing with uh, my stories. It's not every day that you get to experience something crazy like that. So what do you what was the catalyst that make, made you go do that? Uh, round trip from here to America and back was roughly 13 months. Um, that's 13 months sea time um, but we'll definitely stop off in the islands. Uh, Tonga, Samoa, Fiji, Tonga. Yeah, just reconnecting and sewing all together our genealogy, and um, it's definitely a big eye opener. And getting to see the highways that our ancestors used to sail on, that was definitely a highlight of the trip. It's not every day that you go get to experience something crazy like that and travel around the world and retrace those steps. So what was the catalyst that actually made you go do that? I mean, how long was that trip again? So I used to do a lot of wakaama back in high school and our club not only focused on wakaama, but they also focused on all sorts of uh, forms of canoe. And um, definitely one of them was the sailing canoe. And so I would have um, weekends where we learn how to do knot tying and how to read the wind, how to navigate at night time and um, one day when I turned 18 I believe got the phone call from the president of the club asking if uh, I'd be available to um, sail a canoe back from Fiji to Aotearoa and me being a young fella had no commitments I just went yep I'll resign my job tomorrow <laughs> Yeah, so um, that was definitely how the option came onto the table and that's how I took it. 
And out of that whole trip, what would you say was the key highlight? I don't know, I'm just going to go with something as simple as like a sunrise and sunset. Every morning, sunrise and sunset, you never get bored of it. You never just, uh, you know, just disregard it. Or you just sat there with your bowl of breakfast or dinner and you just looked at the sunset and just appreciate life. What kind of food did you eat on this trip? Because we had a quartermaster, which is our cook, um, that used to cook at uh, his marae, uh, we definitely had all the good food. So um, for dinner, sometimes we have boil up or um, tea tea, uh, mutton bird. Um, That's delicious. Yeah. I had it down at Bluff. Yeah, definitely. He, he had a, the morel high with all the crew um, having him on board. Um, and breakfast would just be sometimes scrambled eggs and bacon and toast if we had bread or yeah definitely had a good heavy crew but <laughs> it was a good crew <laughs> fast forwarding to the present you're doing quite a lot of murals about your cultural background now are these murals completed solo by yourself or are they collaborations with other artists because i know that you have another project on the go at the moment and that's done with your partner so how does that kind of process work and how, how did it even begin yeah so when i did um get a job here in uh, Tamaki Makoto, uh, I caught up with a cross paths with a girl from Ngati Fatua, and um, she definitely had a lot of um, what's the word choices and options and opportunities to paint some real cool murals that aligned with with what I was wanting to do with telling stories and and being a storyteller and um, herself was um, into the storytelling and we definitely just you know, kicked it off from there and I was like, hey, let's, let's paint together, let's do it. And yeah, so now we're storytelling on the walls. That's incredible, man. I mean, you, you mentioned to me earlier that she's also currently studying her PhD. What, what's her research on? Uh, her research is on Maramataka, uh, the lunar calendar multi-lunar calendar and basing a lifestyle off this calendar um, yeah and that again aligns with what I was doing with uh, navigation and voyaging and living off the Thai uh, just living off the everyday world yeah just everything seemed like it was aligning from what I've seen you do in your murals, your work is a combination of traditional portraiture, typography, and some kind of more graphic work. Uh, what do you like painting the most? Ah, uh, oh yes. Um, what I like painting the most is, I like doing, to be honest, graffiti, because that's like my outlet. That's where I can do my own thing. Because all these portraits, and um, they're all stories that I need to tell meaning that it's not necessarily my story and that's why I just like graffiti because you can just go back to it and uh, let it loose and then put the tiger back into the back into its cage and how often do you get to paint graffiti these days oh geez um, I think me and the crew in Hamilton OT dub um, been talking about going for a paint now for about four years <laughs> since I've gone for a paint so uh, we definitely need to dust off the cans and um, hit it, yeah. That's the ultimate balancing act, to be able to juggle life and then obviously still achieve all of your artistic aspirations, right? Yeah, life takes over and, you know, I'd be free one weekend, but, you know, the rest of the other boys have life, kids, jobs, and, um, yeah, just finding the time is hard enough. That's totally true, man. But coming back to the murals, I know that you've painted many murals in your career, but recently, or maybe in the past year or two, you've completed one of the largest murals in Aotearoa, in Hamilton. Could you tell us a little bit about what that is and, and how you were involved? Yep, Te Kopimani o Kirikiriroa. I don't know, nah, like I'm pretty sure it's not the biggest, definitely was written in the newspapers as the biggest but um, uh, 
doubt it but uh, that that war was a monster and it was you can see why it was a um, nightmare no one has ever done it since the 50s I've ever thought about painting on it but we de- definitely had a has couple of artists that did go in and try to take it down but it was just a it was a giant no one could tame that beast what was the brief for painting that mural uh, the brief for that was to uh, leave some of the wall exposed so the wall could breathe apparently something to do with the wall breathing and um, it wasn't to go the entire distance it had to stop before there's lights located on one set end of the wall um, basically so cars don't stare at the wall and have a car accident because there's a red light and it had to also talk about uh, the land and the story that it had uh, you know the story there uh, and that definitely um, was right up our alley <laughs> was that large mirror solo job or you, you collab with some other artists that was definitely a collaboration with a good friend Tehonui Tuna a tattoo artist freak of nature his, his illustrations and his, the way he thinks about things is is second to none as well um, and yeah my partner Hanamahi she was uh, another artist that had a contribution into the story um, the design the layout and um, yeah she was definitely there with the roller pole as well putting in some work that's incredible man I mean that mural has obviously become a sort of landmark in Hamilton but I know that mural is not the only one that exists in the public down there so could you tell us a little bit about Boone Festival yep uh, the Boone Festival um, run by Craig McClure and Paulie B yeah um, definitely that um, festival has given me opportunities to paint some pretty pretty cool walls there in Hamilton um, I done possibly three booms now or four maybe and um, every one of those walls isn't small so yeah oh, I even got to help um, Charles and Janine up for a bit there is it just a mural festival are they doing other elements like music and food and things like that yeah it's like a big festival uh, they got food um, music bands um, and we like the art side of things. Uh, it's to get people circulating around Hamilton pretty much. So you get given a map and then you just go to all these places for the festival. How do you think uh, Boone Festival has transformed or contributed to Hamilton as a city? Uh, it's transformed a lot because before uh, we used to be seen as taggers every time you see someone with a roller pole rolling out a wall or with a spray can now it's just like we love what you guys do before we even start painting the wall (laughs) um yeah so it's definitely made it more acceptable to have graffiti and would you say that the general consensus is that the murals have been well received yeah it's definitely positive um and it's a win for us graph writers to not be looked at from the side of the eye and yeah so the story of my first boom festival was with uh i wasn't actually on the lineup i was invited by one of the artists that was on the lineup and that was my good friend tony tuna yeah he goes oh this is a massive wall do you want to help me take it down because i know you got skills with um large scale painting um do you want to give it a go? I was like, yeah. How big's the wall? It's 100 meters long. Holy <laughs> heck. Yeah, so um, we were like, yep, let's do it. It's a good challenge. We'll go 50-50. You know, you do 50, I do 50. And uh, what's a theme we can do? Oh, fuck a popper. Let's do our background and, um, yeah, paint a mural that talks about that. Yeah, and that was my first Boom Festival. I wasn't even on the lineup, but 
all of the murals that you've done look incredible and I mean it's really great to see unpack all of these different stories about your culture and each of these murals I mean that kind of leads us to now um, do you have any other projects or murals or anything uh, that are on the horizon at the moment uh, yeah there's a couple of projects but you know due to COVID uh, a lot of them got paused or um, some of them just had to change their ideas about doing a mural but uh, there's definitely a couple of big projects. I can't tell right now, but there's a couple of um, projects definitely coming through on the horizon. Well, one last question for you. Um, over the past two years, you know, we've been living in a pretty extraordinary circumstance, you know, of an environment within COVID. And there's been lots of disruptions and essentially a fundamental change to how we live our lives. How, do you, how would you say COVID has impacted you? Impact wise is yeah, it's definitely had an impact on um, you know, just the way us Māori operate, you know, with tangi, um, funerals. Uh, it's definitely had a toll on that department. And, uh, so, you know, you've got your restrictions at a funeral, you can't have um, X amount of people over X amount of people, you can't um, there's no hongi, there's no face-to-face um, -face, uh, discussions, there's no um, going out and just, you know, just having a good old hug sometimes uh, with old family members you haven't seen. And that, that's definitely, um, that's definitely had a toll on um, us Māori, but, you know, definitely everyone in the world has been impacted. Yeah, it's, I reckon in that department it's definitely taken toll. And just in closing, do you have any shout outs that you'd like to make? Uh, yep, shout outs to the Ho Kanga of Tamaki Makoto, uh, Ngati Fatua, Rake, the Ho Kanga Kikonei, yeah, and then my crew down in Hamilton, OTW, out to win, yeah. Um, yeah, and a big mihi tour. All the other writers and artists that that's getting up there going for going for gold i love it awesome bro i mean thank you so much for joining us and sharing your perspective with the audience uh, i really appreciate that you've come all the way up to tamaki makoto from hamilton uh, to share your art with the community and, and share your story i mean it's been really great to observe you painting the pavilion and you know be another artist from the graph world who's started to embrace their cultural roots it's, it's a really interesting time i think um it's really inspiring obviously and I, I do hope that it encourages other writers to find themselves through other mediums as well alongside graffiti um and and you know believe that there are other opportunities that um, you can discover or shape your identity in closing if you like the content make sure you subscribe and leave a comment below uh, and make sure to stay tuned for more content because next month we've got the infamous swim aka tins from dmn joining us and i'm super excited to share his story peace <laughs>